I'd like to talk to you today about overcoming the temptation to grumble and complain, which all of us are tempted to. In fact, God's Word tells us that that's one sin that tripped up God's people in the past and one thing that will trip us up to, to today and will hinder us from finishing well. You know, the Apostle Paul says that uh, those who run in a race all run. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24 to 27, but, but only one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may win. Everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. They then do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. Therefore I run in such a way as not without aim. I box in such a way as not beating the air. But I discipline my body and I make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. You see, a burning desire on the Apostle Paul's heart was to be able to finish well. Now see, that's the context. His desire to finish well and to, to do whatever it took to finish well. And we can see that at the end of his life he could say, I fought the good fight and kept the faith and, and finished the course. He finished well. Now he says that's not always true with God's people. 1 Corinthians 10, 1, far. That's the reason, look, I want to go to any extreme to finish well because I want to, don't want you to be unaware, brethren, that our fathers, that God's people in the past, they were all under the cloud. That is, they what? They experienced that supernatural guidance that you see there in the book of Exodus. That's what he means by the cloud. They all passed through the sea. They experienced that supernatural deliverance. They were all baptized into Moses. They had that godly leader in the cloud and in the sea. And they all ate the same spiritual food and they all drank the same spiritual drink. That is, they had supernatural provision. So you see, they had the guidance and the deliverance and the leader and the provision of God. But yet, what we read is this, verse 5, Nevertheless, with most of them, God was not well pleased, for they were laid low in the wilderness. They did not go into the promised land. They did not experience all that God had for them. Now he says, these things happen as an example for us, that we would not crave evil things. Then he's going to talk about various sins that tripped them up and hindered them from finishing well. That's the context of that familiar verse, no temptations overtaken you, but such as is common to men. He says these are common temptations, and one common temptation he'll list is the temptation to grumble and complain. To grumble and complain, he'll say that in verse 10, nor grumble as some of them did. Grumbling that invites God's loving discipline. You see, when I'm grumbling, I have forgotten God's past goodness in my life. I've forgotten that everything I ever receive in life other than judgment is due to the grace of God. I'm not concentrating on His present goodness in my life at that moment, and I'm not anticipating His future goodness. Now, you see, the answer is not just to, oh, I'm not going to grumble outwardly, but I'll just grumble, grumble inwardly, and that doesn't solve anything. And that's why God gives us the, the privilege to work things out before Him. I think that's why you see those psalms of lament where the psalmist is working things out, he, he's, he's discombobulated, his spiritual equilibrium has been upset and he has to work things out and you say, okay God, why is this happening? It looks like the wrong people are winning and the people that could care less about you. God gives you the freedom to what? Lament and work those things out before God. And that's necessary in order for us to obey that glorious command that you see in Philippians 2. Do all things without grumbling and complaining. And when you do that, you love the promise there in Philippians 2, 14 and 15. He says, when you do all things without grumbling and complaining, what is the promise? So that you'll prove yourself to be blameless and innocent children of God, above reproached in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you appear as lights in the world. You see, all of us will be tempted to grumble and complain. He, we read in 1 Corinthians 10, it tripped God's people up. It's why many did not enter into the promised land, all that God had for them. There are certainly things in all of our life, all of us are tempted to, to grumble and complain. God invites us to work it out before Him, to seek Him, to let Him speak to us and minister to us, that we can be lights in the midst of a dark and crooked world. Lord, would you help each one of us, Lord, even to recognize our temptation 
uh, to grumble and complain. We thank you that it's not a sin to be tempted. And we'll be tempted as long as we live in this body. But God, would you break through with the insight we need, with the help we need, with the support we need, to, Lord, show us a different way. Show us a better way. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.